This is my 1987 Honda XR250R. If you haven't seen my previous video on the fabrication and installation of a top case, be sure to check that out first. This bike's AC electrical system is powered by a 100 watt stator. It has a tail light and a 35 watt incandescent headlight. The disadvantage of this type of system is that the brightness of the headlight is directly proportional to the engine RPMs. The lower the RPMs, the dimmer the bulb, and the higher the RPMs, the brighter the bulb. Furthermore, when I press the brake, the brake light that I have installed draws current away from the headlight, dimming it even further. As I have converted this dirt bike to a dual sport bike, this presents a serious problem when I'm approaching a stoplight after dark. My solution to this problem is to convert the AC electrical system to a DC electrical system and install a battery. I read on many forums that Trail Tech makes a regulator rectifier that is the solution to my problem. Pictured is the Trail Tech regulator rectifier on the bottom, side by side with the AC regulator that came off of my bike. These are the instructions that came with the regulator rectifier for wiring it into the bike's current electrical system. It appears pretty straightforward. Connecting the regulator rectifier into the bike's actual electrical system might present more of a challenge. Let's get started. In order to access the bike's electrical system, I have to remove the top case in order to remove the seat, and I also have to remove the gas tank. The bike's AC regulator is mounted to the frame beneath the gas tank. As you can see, the regulator rectifier is about the same size as the old AC regulator, but unfortunately there wasn't an easy way to mount it. Instead, I opted to mount it to the top of the air box beneath the seat. The installation instructions say that Trailtech's regulator rectifier has to have a floating ground. My wiring diagram indicates I have two connections to ground, one on the frame and one at the alternator, the stator. The very helpful folks at Trail Tech's customer support told me that to achieve a floating ground, I needed to disconnect one of these two grounds. The easiest by far was to disconnect the uh, ground to frame beneath the seat. As shown, I just tucked that wire out of the way in case I ever needed it again for whatever reason. This is the wiring in its test phase. It's not all cleaned up, but I wanted to test the bike and make sure everything worked right before I cleaned everything up. So this is what is shown here. Uh, so this is the regulator rectifier not yet mounted to the box. Um, the ground wire is not yet tucked away. I also have a battery that I have installed inside the air box. It's a very small 12 volt sealed lead acid battery and it had already actually been installed in order to run a horn to make the bike street legal. Here's a picture of the wiring all cleaned up and the regulator rectifier mounted to the top of the air box. Although it's not shown, I did use some wire wrap to uh, go around the wires that are running from uh, higher up the frame down to the air box just to make everything nice and cleaned up. Here are the changes to the wiring diagram that I made. Hopefully this will help anyone in the future who is in making a similar installation on their own bike. Not shown are the uh, headlight switch used to operate the high and low beams of the headlight as well as the tail light brake switch. Now that the DC conversion was successful, I wanted to replace the stock 35 watt incandescent headlight with something a little more powerful. The stock headlight assembly is fits bulb H6M. I had trouble finding those types of bulbs that were bright enough to use on the street and so I wanted to find a way to use an H4 bulb. In the end, uh, this is what I ended up doing. If this works well, I will probably replace the zip ties with metal ones. Uh, it seems to be a very secure connection and I was able to use an H4 uh, headlight uh, that is a high intensity LED. This is a before image of the 35 watt incandescent headlight. Before the DC conversion, it would be much dimmer at low RPMs or if I press the brake. 
This is the new high intensity LED. As you can see, it is much brighter. As I had difficulty finding details on such a conversion, I hope someone out there finds this useful. This was the AC to DC conversion of a 1987 Honda XR250R and headlight upgrade. Thanks for watching and ride safe.